talk about binary heaps. I don't know what sand dunes. And uh, <laughs> so, given the audience profile, right? I'm sure a lot of you already know about this, but. It's not pausing. Sorry, the intro did it dirty. No, I did not. Okay. Hang on, huh? Okay. So, okay, I'm going to talk about binary heaps. Here we go. Um, so, <coughs> I stumbled across this with the React 16.10 update, as some of you may have seen. Uh, a certain thing was re-implemented from an array into, uh, into a binary heap, basically. And this is exciting because a lot of people complain that like real life has no computer science stuff. Uh, that was an example, that was an anti-example. So that got me interested because I don't know what a binary heap is. And I decided to learn about it and now I'm going to share. All right, so these are the contents. I'm going to talk about why we use them, a brute force approach to solving that problem, and some other stuff. All right, so the first question is, why do we, what do we use binary heaps for? Um, and due to the time constraints, I'm just going to like, I'm not going to explore anything in great detail. I'm just going to skip over everything. <laughs> um, but a very common use case, did not copy this from the React thing, is to implement a priority queue. So what is a priority queue? A priority queue is basically when you have a large, or you have a number of items, and you need to know the something like the biggest one or the smallest one and the rest you don't really care about until the biggest one or smallest one disappears then you need to know the next biggest one okay so a brute force approach to solving this uh, could be use an ordered array right something like this so the benefit of this is that um, okay let's just say it's the, the biggest item the biggest item is always in the same place it's always at the end OK, so it's very easy. And when you remove it, the next biggest item is uh, still at the end because the previous one was taken away. Uh, the problem with this is that, OK, yeah, so the, 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 the largest item is always in a stable position. Uh, the problem with this is when you want to put something in, uh, you have to potentially move a lot of items. So in this, in this example, we have to move like all those things to make space for the number two. And an important distinction is that it's not necessarily difficult to know where to put number two, but it is uh, inefficient to move all the stuff afterwards. Uh, this is something that I didn't get at first. Uh, you, can, you can use like a, a binary search method to figure out where to put the, uh, the two, but it's the moving of everything else um, that is the, the bad part. So basically, all those green arrows are the bad part. Um, and what that is in technical terms is complexity. So uh, inserting an item into an ordered array has a relatively bad complexity, meaning there's a lot of green arrows. So if we want to solve this, basically what we have to do is we have to not have so many green arrows. right? Uh, so the problem now is that if you look at the 7, if we've if we're not moving that, we can't move the four. So even the green arrows that I've left don't make sense anymore. OK, so this, this um, attempt to reduce the complexity obviously has a few more steps. Now, the simplest thing you can do is you're still moving stuff around. So you can still move the four somewhere and the 12 somewhere. Um, you just don't know exactly where yet. And this is where the binary heap comes in. So before I explain exactly what it is, let's like, uh, think, about, think back to the ordered array and think of it like vertically, so with 80 at the bottom and getting smaller and smaller. Uh, so, so this is like the vertical representation of our ordered array. Uh, a binary tree looks something like this. Uh, so think of it vertically as well. It's not straight, though. It's got like uh, branches and leaves. Uh, now, 
it shares certain properties with an ordered array, namely the most important thing, which is that our biggest item in this case is always in the same place. So it's always at the top of the tree, um, at the root, basically. Um, that's not the only rule, though. I mean, that's, that's what we want, but what about all the, the problems we had when we tried to use an ordered array? Well, in order to, uh, to have a valid binary tree, uh, sorry, binary heap, you have to follow uh, a few rules. So the first one is that uh, the children have to be uh, smaller than, or I think you can have them equal to as well, the, their parent. So in this case, uh, below 80, you have to be less than or equal to 80, and then where it says etc., it has to be less than or equal to whatever is in the left below 80. Uh, and the second rule is that when you add something, you, you can only add it at like that place, basically, going from top to bottom, left to right. So you keep going until every one of the third level has two uh, children, and then you start again at the left side. Um, so these are the two rules. Oh, confirm counting the time, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so, so let's look at how we solve the problem of like trying to move less stuff, but still move them into places where they can fit. Um, so to do that, what I've done is I've reordered that ordered array uh, that we saw before. I've just reversed it to make it easier to, to reason about. And I've put this uh, directly into a binary heap. Uh, so note that I, oh sorry, I, I have not put this uh, array into a binary heap. And if you look, if you follow the order of the items, you'll see that 80 is the first one uh, in both. 37 is the second one in both. 7 is third in the binary heap, but third is 24 in the ordered array. Um, I've just done this to make the point. Uh, if I had copied the ordered array directly into this, this heap structure, it, it would have worked, but none of you would be convinced. So, <clears throat> so what I've done is, is, is uh, construct a valid uh, binary heap from those, from those values. Now let's imagine we're putting a, a new item in. Uh, so according to the first rule, we can only put it there. That's the next place. Um, so there it goes. But now there's a problem. Uh, oh, no, uh, so <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, <coughs> the uh, so the first thing is satisfied. We put it in the place it's supposed to go, but the second property is not. Uh, and also there's the obvious thing, which is that it's now the biggest item and it's not at the top. So what do we do? Well, we do this thing called, uh, it has a few names like heapifying, percolation, sifting, blah, blah, blah. Uh, basically what we do is we uh, incrementally check the second property, which is, sorry, the first property which is just to make sure that uh, for each like mini tree that everything is good. So in this case, it's not good because 85 is bigger than 24, so we just swap them. So then we have to do the same for the next level. Um, and then finally, the next level. So uh, obviously, once it reaches the top, then you stop. Uh, and look, it's correct. It somehow made its way up. So now we have a, a new binary heap. Um, and the, the item with the biggest value is where it should be. So how does this link back to us reducing the number of green arrows? Well, let's, um, let's, let's look back at the uh, flat array that we used to uh, build the binary heap that, that, that I just showed you. So this is it. So the first thing we did, so I'm just going to repeat what we just did, but looking at both of these. Um, the first thing we did is we added the 85 to the end. So it's, it's over there in the binary tree, but on the ordered array, it's the last element. We then swapped 85 and 24. Um, and then we swapped 85 and 37. And then we finally swapped 85 and 80. So what we've just done there, which is very like obvious and clear, we're just swapping things that are ab above and below each other, actually turns into something that, if you didn't know what was going on, looks quite 
arbitrary in the flat array. But the important thing is that we, uh, okay, that's the same. The important thing is that we didn't touch all these elements. Okay, and that's, that's the, where the savings come. Because remember, the problem we had was that we had to move everything before. Now we don't have to move most of the things. Um, and exactly how many things did we move or not move? Uh, don't panic, but it's maths. It's log 9, which is uh, 3 point something, but rounds up to 4. So what? I, I'm not going to go into log, but basically it's like when you, OK, no, that's going into it. So, uh, <laughs> so the important thing is log of something is, is a lot less than that thing. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, I'm not going to cover removal. But you can look at this slide, and I'll leave it as an exercise to the reader. Um, but you basically do the same thing, but you like invert the rules. So you take away from the top, and then you have to check downwards rather than upwards. And when you check downwards, you take the, the smaller one of the children, if you're implementing a max, uh, binary max seed. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. <coughs> Why Beyonce like you? Uh, huh? when, only when you got sound. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>